So the laughing stock, known as CNN, is an embarrassment to the journalism profession. And it's not because they're biased, which, of course, despite whatever they say, they are, and they will stop at nothing to destroy the president, but it's because they just make stuff up all the time. Didn't happen? Just make it up. No one's gonna know. Our audience is stupid. Remember. I mean, that part might be true, all 15 of them. But here are nine things the fake news network, simply put, pulled out of their ass. Oh yeah, guys, and by the way, it's not just nine stories. It's nine stories that we got time for. I got pages and pages and pages of stories of stuff they made up. But let's start with the obvious. Jim Acosta lying and saying he never put his hands on that White House intern when Sarah Sanders tweeted this, quote, we will not tolerate a reporter placing his hands on a young woman. Abilio Acosta said, this is a lie. Oh, is it, Abilio? Because it's hard to lie when there is video evidence. Oh, whoa, what is, is that you putting your hand on the intern? Looks like to me that you're putting your hand on a young woman. Now, I don't care if you think that it was just a love tap or a karate chop or a full on assault. What is clearly not a lie is the fact that he put his hands on a young woman. That is not a lie. You cannot fabricate video evidence. That makes you the liar, Jim Acosta. Number two. Their other White House correspondent, this guy, Jeff Zeleny, who's like their B-list guy that they wheel out whenever Jim Acosta is not available, also told a blatant lie. On Twitter, he said, quote, President Trump declines to answer questions on South Lawn of White House today as he heads to Florida for a campaign rally tonight. It marks at least a week that he's gone without answering questions about his tweets or anything else in the news. Huh, but... What happened literally the day before Zeleny wrote that tweet, hmm? Are you willing to meet with President Rouhani and under what conditions? And have there been any preliminary discussions about something like that? I'll meet with anybody. I believe in meeting. Uh, the Prime Minister said it better than anybody can say it. Speaking to other people, especially when you're talking about potentials of war and death and famine and lots of other things, you meet. Huh. That kind of looked like the president answering questions, didn't it? Yes, the president had a whole press conference, but he hasn't answered questions in about the news in about a week. This clown, Zeleny, just made that crap up. But dude, you've got to wait a bit before you rewrite history. You can't do it the next day, because then people will catch on. All right, number three. Remember back in July when CNN breathlessly reported this fairy tale? Sources tell CNN that President Trump's longtime former personal attorney, Michael Cohen, has begun spilling the beans. One of the bombshells he reportedly wants the public to know is that then-candidate Donald Trump knew in advance and approved of that June 2016 Trump Tower meeting in which Russians promised dirt on Hillary Clinton. And these sources say Cohen is prepared to make that claim to special counsel Robert Mueller. Yes, that means collusion, that means impeachment, that means President Hillary Clinton. The one problem is, it's a load of crap. We found out Lanny Davis was the primary source for the story, who later came out and said, quote, I should have been much clearer that I could not confirm the story. Oops. But CNN continued to run with the story as fact. Even other fake news outlets retracted their reports, as even Glenn Sock Puppet Greenwald had to admit. The Washington Post and the New York Post listened to that and they said, wait a minute, we independently confirmed CNN stories based on an anonymous source, and our anonymous source was Lanny Davis, who's now saying the whole thing is false. So they did what they had to do and what they, sh what they should have done, which is they retracted the story, they outed their own source, they said our anonymous source is Lanny Davis, and we now retract it because he says it's false. CNN couldn't do that because they lied to the entire world. A shame. And guess what? In that same week, the same CNN hack who broke the Michael Cohen Lanny Davis story, Jim Shudo, said that Trump, he did not consult with the director of national intelligence, Dan Coats, prior to revoking the security clearance of John Brennan. Remember the entire media freaking out about that one. The only eensy weensy tiny little problem with this, and that is that Trump did consult with Dan Coats. Again, oops. Shooter's tweet, by the way, though, is still up. So, Jim, you care to delete or correct your fake news? Remember, CNN, facts first. Guess not. Number five. Several news outlets reported that Omarosa was physically dragged from the White House. However, 
This charge was led by CNN contributor and loudmouth April Ryan. Secret Service stopped her, and she was escorted off campus. But Secret Service, who almost never weighs into the news, took to Twitter to correct April Ryan's fake news writing, quote, reporting regarding Secret Service personnel physically removing Omarosa Manigault Newman from the White House complex is womp womp incorrect. Sorry, April. Maybe you wouldn't be called a loser by the president if you weren't complicit in spreading lies. Oh, and, uh, and hate, by the way, because you do plenty of that, too. Number six. Let's not forget the time CNN tried to help stage a protest by Muslims in London condemning the ISIS attack the day before that killed seven people to make it look more compelling, like there's more people. Here you can see the cameraman moving the protesters into the shot, to, into the field of vision to make the measly protest that consisted of, I don't know, a handful of people look like it was bustling. See, look how many Muslims are disavowing ISIS because after all, it's a religion of peace and these Muslims are here to prove it. And then later you can actually see, see that hand? You can see the producer's hand and the camera people asking them to move into the camera site so that it just looks like a huge protest. Meanwhile, there's really not that many people there. But still, Snopes somehow reported this as false. It was never staged, saying, quote, nothing suggested that CNN staged the demonstrations to any extent greater than, of course, engaging the protesters and directing their positions and asking them questions as part of a news segment. Yeah, so in other words, it's not a fake protest, but it's also a fake protest. It's not fake, guys. It just isn't real. For number seven. How can we forget their overzealous breaking news reporting on the existence of a totally fake dossier which Hillary Clinton paid for? In January of 2017, CNN reported that intelligence chiefs, including James Comey, briefed Trump on Russian operatives who claimed they had compromising information on the president-elect. Think Russian prostitutes and the P-tapes, you guys, you guys remember. But here's what James Comey said to Brett Baer. Uh, CNN reported at the time that you handed a two-page executive summary of the dossier over to him. I did not. Now, I know it's hard because you're dealing with two liars, so it's hard to choose whom to believe when you've got two liars going up against each other. But then why would, let me ask this, why would CNN update the story to take out any direct reference to Comey handing Trump the report? We've got to go with Comey on this one, because according to the Washington Examiner, quote, the, re the most recent updated version from January, of, uh, January 12, 2017, doesn't say specifically Comey was the one, was one of the officials who presented it to him. Interesting. All right, moving on to number eight. Sometimes CNN is forced to fire people because their reporting is so atrocious. In June of 2017, three CNN staffers resigned over a retracted story about Scaramucci and Russia, of course, citing an anonymous source, which psst, means it could have come from anywhere. It could have come from the hot dog stand or the coffee shop across the street from the White House, or it could have even been completely made up. They reported, quote, the Senate Intelligence Committee was looking into the chief executive of a $10 billion Russian investment fund who met with financier Anthony Scaramucci before the inauguration. Of course, these media outlets have been reckless in their pursuit of this witch hunt, this Mueller witch hunt, to find anything Russia-related they can. And in this instance, it didn't turn out. It turned out to be not just a big nothing burger, but in fact, it turned out to be completely false. CNN fired the reporter, the assistant managing editor, and the executive editor of investigations for this huge blunder. And of course, finally, number nine, their conspiracy mongering with zero basis in fact. Chris Cuomo, with no evidence, suggests that Trump is sending signals to QAnon. He has his people at his rally that look for the number 17 as signs of truth. Q is the 17th letter in the alphabet. And they see Trump uh, tweeting something like this, 17 angry Democrats, they take value in the number 17, a potential sign. Oh, it could be, could be a signal, guys. Or it could just be that Mueller's team consists of seven angry Democrats. They are engaging here in wild speculation, insane lies, and irresponsible conspiracy. And hey, that's just, that's just another day at the fake news network, CNN. You guys have no views, you have no facts, and you have no integrity, which is why everyone screams at the rallies, CNN sucks, because you do.